Time for a report on the pepper plant that's growing in straight charcoal. I didn't really keep up that well on the fertilization. I think it would have uh, probably gotten bigger and kept producing, but it sort of got to a certain size and then just stopped. And that may be because of the variety too. Some some tomato plants do that. I don't know about peppers really. Um, I think it probably would have done a little better with more consistent and more varied uh, fertilization. I pretty much used chicken manure tea and then I used uh, urine a couple times. It uh, was overall a success. There are some physiological problems which would be consistent with uh, kind of uh, incomplete nutrition, which is very possibly the case. Like here, there's something that looks like blossom end rot maybe, and that's usually a calcium deficiency. But it doesn't have to do with just whether the calcium is there. There's other factors involved. I have here various plants growing in pure charcoal. This is a pepper that I've been growing all summer. That's the last pepper on there. So I'm gonna pick that pepper and we're gonna dump this out and look at the roots because I'm real curious about what those roots are doing. All the rest of them are cactus and succulents. We'll talk about how the experiment's going, whether I think this is like a practical idea or not, or just an experiment, how this might make sense or not. Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, I have various succulents and cacti here, and the only one that's done really poorly is this. This is straight charcoal, and this one I really crushed it up. Like, there's a lot of fine powder in there, so any big pieces like that are bridged and filled with, uh, you know, around it with fine powder. It's extremely light, extremely lightweight. So by comparison, these were the same size when I planted them, and this one is in more like a just a real sandy, charcoal-y stuff, but it has like some compost in it and stuff like that. Quite a bit different. You can see it did very different. Now, I don't know why that is. It may be that this just dries out so fast because it really does. It holds a lot of water, but it dries out really fast. Like the capillary action is just crazy or something. So that could be it. Um, I'm gonna take this out of here because it's just not doing well. Unless it's something about like, you know, all the ash and stuff in here. This one has seemed very happy. Um, it flowered uh, three, I think, I think it made three big flowers this year or something. I have pictures of those I'll put up here. Again, straight charcoal, very, very lightweight. Uh, some of these have been in charcoal for a while. This, this was in charcoal a lot of last winter and it just sat uh, basically completely dry for the winter, you know, most of the winter. And then I started watering it in the spring. Water it pretty sporadically. Um, same with this one. This one, there's a little yellowing here, but I'm not sure. This has been out, uh, not water. I mean, this is really, really light. It's just like fluffy charcoal. And we're gonna take this out too, because I'm sending this to someone who sent me some uh, Peruvian apple cactus cuttings. So I've had it out drying because I wanted it to you know, lighten up just for shipping. And what do we got here? Okay, so you can kind of see what's going on here. The uh, fine root hairs are definitely into the charcoal, like they're holding these chunks of charcoal. So the root hairs are penetrating the pores of the charcoal. Obviously, not a lot of it, right? There's not like a big massive root system in there that's, you know, filling the whole pot. Where it is on the charcoal, you can really see that it, it has its root hairs into the charcoal, into the pores of the charcoal, and it's holding on to it. Okay, this one uh, looks, you know, fine. It, it's got a, another little bud starting here. You know, with all these, you really need to feed them. The charcoal is just a, you, you need to think of the charcoal as just a substrate, you know, to grow the plant in. And when you add the nutrients, they're gonna go in and, and get into the charcoal, and then the roots of the cactus are gonna go in there and try to get them. You know, it's not like, uh, soil with organic matter, where the organic matter is breaking down and releasing nutrients. Yeah, think of it as a substrate and it really needs to be fed. I'm not very good at, at uh, taking care of things like that and, you know, keeping up with fertilization and, and all that stuff. These are lithops or living stones. It's a type of succulent. And these are really easy to kill, but they've done really, really well in charcoal. The charcoal dries out really fast and it's just so open and well-drained and porous. I mean, this is fairly chunky stuff and they just seem to really like it. You water them once in a while and these started out as about maybe the size of corn kernels in maybe seven or eight months ago. So they're extremely happy. You know, this one's already uh, splitting again. So I have a feeling that for lithops in particular and other succulents and cacti that have that similar problem of just not being able to tolerate any kind of standing stagnant moisture, that charcoal is gonna be really excellent for that. Okay, let's dump out this pepper plant. It's uh, 
Pick my last pepper here. These peppers turned out real nice. So some of these peppers did show signs of nutrient deficiency like this uh, is probably what's called blossom end rot, which on a pepper is, you know, not on the end, but you also get it on tomatoes on the end. That's a calcium problem, but it's not necessarily that there isn't enough calcium. In fact, I would guess that there's a lot of calcium in here because this charcoal was straight out of the pit. Like I burned it, I went and shoveled it out of the pit and I put it in the pot and planted the pepper. Okay, now a lot of people are gonna tell you, you cannot get away with that. You have to do this, you, ha you have to pre-charge it, you have to inoculate it, yada da yada da. But, you know, I mean, the plant grew and I'm pretty sure, you know, I don't know unless I try, but I'm pretty sure that if I had just fertilized it more, but also not just more, but more, more of a varied diet. You know, I think all I used was chicken manure tea and a little bit of urine. And, you know, I think getting some compost out of the garden, like the garden compost, the stuff that's like all the, you know, weeds and food scraps and like a real diverse, a bunch of stuff in there, soak that in water and water it with that. It would get a little bit broader of a, like a nutrient, uh, more of a balanced, diverse diet. But my point with the with the whole pre-charging thing and why I don't pre-charge is <clears throat> I just don't I don't see why I need to do it before I plant the, the thing, you know. You can you can tell me all kinds of theory about why I should do it before I plant. But my experience in the garden soil has been that I, I really don't need to do it first. It doesn't seem like the roots really even went all the way to the bottom. It looks like they kind of chose to just stay near the top of the soil. Apparently there was enough, you know, moisture up here in the first six inches. I mean, most of these are really more like in the first four inches. Here's a, a mat that's full of charcoal. Yeah, I guess I don't really know what to say. I, I can't really see anything that interesting in there, except that the roots didn't go very deep. I guess it's possible that if the charcoal was so effective at filtering nutrients that the, all the nutrients got used up before they even got down in there, that would cause the plant to just not bother seeking any further or just had enough, you know, to not have to grow, grow deep roots. And so why, why should it, you know, it's obviously a pretty robust plant. Okay, let's talk about whether it's a good idea, experimentation and stuff like that. All right, is it a good idea to grow stuff in straight charcoal? Um, I don't know. For, I think for succulents or anything that rots really easy, especially like the lithops, that's the classic example of a plant that's super easy to kill with water. And the charcoal, even when it's wet, it just has this openness and porosity and breathability to it, unless it's just like a big slushy mess, unlike say clay or slimy organic matter or something like that. But clearly there's not enough nutrients in the charcoal, no matter what, even if it has a lot of ash in it to support, you know, regular plant growth, like you need to add stuff to it. So I think if you're gonna grow healthy plants and it's gonna be practical, you need to treat it like a substrate more. I mean, it's not an inert substrate. So think of it kind of like hydroponics, right? So I don't really know that much about hydroponics, but as far as I know, it's an inert substrate and then you flood it with nutrients and water and then you know you drain it away and you you reflood it up periodically i think i think that's how it works i actually really don't know i've been around it a little bit and it's a big deal here because of the pot and the pot growing industry and a lot of that is actually done indoors with hydroponics but i just have no involvement with that so i don't really know but i think you want to think of it as a substrate plus a regular mineral substrate isn't going to have the same kind of nutrient holding and grabbing capacity of charcoal, which definitely has a, an affinity for certain nutrients, at least nitrogen for sure. Also, I think that with those nutrients in the charcoal, there's a potential to be growing more microbial life in this, this charcoal than there probably is with a more inert mineral substrate. I mean, I think there's potential to use this in something like a gray water system. I actually have a, a design that I wanna try out that's similar to, it's basically kind of like a large scale leach field system for a septic. So it would be very similar to a septic, but it would be for gray water. Instead of using gravel, I would use charcoal. And then that would form like, you know, this big uh, well-drained nutrient base ideal place for roots to grow 
and then you know plant things along or, or on that like vines or fruit trees. That's a little different, but it's kind of similar. And I think, you know, there's probably ways to creatively use charcoal like that. Another thing that occurred to me is like, if people do want to pre-charge their charcoal, which I don't, I just do it in the ground. But if you wanted to, for some reason, you could, for instance, uh, burn a pit of charcoal, right? Like a big trench like I do. So I'll have these trenches that are like nine feet long and you know 18 inches deep or something like that when i'm done burning in there it's mostly full of charcoal like if i burn a, bi a big burn and you probably could just plant stuff right in there i bet you could plant stuff right in there and just dump a lot of fertilizer on it uh, for the summer like use a bunch of pea when you first start like just uh, charge it with like a couple buckets of urine and what mixed with water and then after that just kind of fertilize it on and off through the summer and you ought to get uh, pretty good growth is my guess and that by the time of the end of the summer came that charcoal would all be kind of like um, charged up and settled in and, and e there'd be like an equilibrium because charcoal is going to absorb nutrients and just kind of suck up a lot of nutrients that the plants actually won't be able to get so you do need to use extra fertilizer anyway so that could be a system of some kind, like if you burned one pit a year, let it fill up, plant it for the summer, grow a bunch of crops on it, whatever, peppers, tomatoes, squash, who knows. And then at the end of the year, you shovel that out, put it wherever you want to use it and burn again and do it all over. I don't really see any real benefit to that personally, but there may be some way to work that into some kind of a system that makes sense. I think it's a neat experiment though. I mean, I, I, and I think there's all these warnings about like, you need to do this, you need to do that. The charcoal, you know, if you don't do this, it has too much ash, it's too alkaline, just see what happens. And you know, this pepper experiment didn't really go perfectly. It wasn't ideal or anything. And I, it looked like I had some nutrient deficiencies, but I harvested a bunch of good peppers. And if I try it again, I think the way to, to see how much of that is intrinsic to like this process and how much of it's just me not fertilizing enough would be to just fertilize more and with more varied stuff, especially like a compost tea. So the thing about like a potting soil or something is you're gonna have organic matter in there, right? So you're gonna have little bits of like decayed plant matter and bark and that stuff is slowly breaking down in the pot, releasing nutrients, but you're not gonna get that with charcoal at all. So that's why you need to keep up with the fertilization. So if you have something with like a rich compost added to it, let's say I put in like a quarter or a third of really good compost, you know, my good garden compost into a potting mix, and then I grow a pot and uh, plant in there all summer, it may not need, it's not gonna need nearly as much nutrient. It, it may get away with no nutrient and get through the summer and grow great because that release is there, that constant release of that organic matter and stuff breaking down. And if there's any mineral soil in there, the mineral soil may be breaking down too because that's how dirt is made, right? This is made from rocks. This is made because there are chemical processes and microbes and stuff in the soil that are slowly breaking down and decaying the rock into soil, which is constantly releasing nutrients. And I don't think you're gonna get much of that going on with charcoal, if any. So yeah, those are my thoughts. And I think it's a neat experiment. I mean, why not do it? Just if you have a bunch of charcoal, you're making biochar, just fill a big pot, like a big five, seven gallon pot like that, throw a plant in there and fertilize it a lot and see what happens just cause it's kind of cool. And if you're growing lithops, yeah, I think that's the, I think that's gonna be the substrate for lithops. It's awesome. The only problem with it, with the charcoal, is that when you water it and it's dry, like if you water it too fast, the pot will fill up and the charcoal floats and all of it just kind of starts floating and, and falling out and stuff. That's a con kind of a constant problem with watering. You have to kind of water it slowly and let it soak in or put it in a, a dish of water. Okay, that's it. I don't know. Hope that was interesting.